So in this video again, I'm gonna show an example of how create how to create a template component plugin uh, for Apex. That's a new plugin type from Oracle Apex 23.1. And um, just a quick heads up, we're doing a challenge on from MT GmbH, and uh, you can submit template components to this challenge and get a chance to win great prizes and they're gonna be reviewed from our judges. So let's jump in. So what what gonna what we are going to build is a small comparison, text comparison plugin. And um, we have these blocks of text and um, each line is compared, for example, um, to the previous line here we have a new G, so it's marked in the one before we don't have a G. Here the C is capitalized here, so it's different again to the row before it's marked. Here is a, what, something missing, etc. etc. And we have a few options. So this one has uh, rotating colors, this one is just yellow. Here is a different comparison mode. So instead of comparing it to the previous line, we just compare it to the first line. So that's why. Um, this one doesn't have any markings and another one is just we can use a separator to split one string into multiple ones. So let's have a co look at the code and I like to use um, web components here. So um, the API to using this is just um, using this x still compare tc custom component and we pass compare mode, rotating colors, and separate char, the options. And for the strings you want to compare, we just pass data attributes here. And um, yeah, these will be compared. And for example, here with the um, separator, we have the colon here, and we just pass two rows, but it will split them to single strings here. I don't want to go into too much detail about the code behind this. I mean, you could generate something like this from ChatGPT with a nice, um, yeah, question or uh, how do you say it? Like with a nice text describing everything, ChatGPT will generate good web components. I also have a video that explains a little bit more how web components work, but just simply to, to show you how, how simple this is, we just get the attributes. So we have some settings. We pass the data at uh, the data text to get the strings. We uh, have this compare strings function that basically just loops over each character of each string and marks or adds HTML mark text around the changes. And um, in the end, we just change the inner HTML of our web component content to um, the result of this. So this is really no witchcraft. Um, you can, as I said, just use ChatGPT to generate anything, uh, a nice web component. So what I'm going to focus on instead in this video is how we can make a nice um, template component out of just this nice API. So how we can translate that to Apex. So in Apex, the first thing we're going to do is creating a new plugin and uh, give it a name and internal identifier. The type of the plugin needs to be template component and we set it to be only usable as a report slash multiple for now. In the partial section, we're going to pass the data attributes or data text with the text attribute and in the report body we can define our template component and the report row section we can keep empty. Now we can just create the plugin and then notice that the text attribute got automatically created. If you go in there we can also say that it's required. Great. Apply the changes. And now we need to actually use it on a page to see if it works. So on a fresh page, we just create a region of this template component. And uh, then I add some uh, query into it. I just uh, use sysguid to generate 
15 rows and um, they are should be different a little bit so that's a nice use case we have to add the sysquid to the text attribute run the page and we see it does not work currently this is because i forgot to upload the javascript file files from the web component which in quickly do that in the plugin just input the javascript files and copy the reference go to the plugin paste the reference string into the javascript files to load and now if we reload the page we see that it does actually work now great next up we want to actually add an attribute to set the compare mode it's currently fixed so we need to create an attribute for it we do the scope for for report because we don't want to set it per row level but per the whole component level add static id and label we use the type select list, set it to required, set a default value, and then we can actually add the single values. Previous line is the first or the default option. And um, we create another one for first line. And great. Now that's that this is done, we can um, we can use it in our template. So we're gonna copy compare mode here and use the syntax, the template syntax to set it dynamically. On the page itself, I modified the query and used modulo to have alternating values in the rows. And we can set, set the attribute to previous line with the select list. We see in previous line that all the numbers are marked that we added. And if we change this now to first line, only the uh, zeros should be marked and that's working great so we add a low code way to set the attributes the next attribute i added was rotate colors and it's just a report a yes no type on scope report and um, the implementation in the html is a little bit more complex because we need to do an if else on the value because yes no apex attributes return y or n and we can just say if value then return true otherwise false and um, inside the thing we can now enable or disable this attribute and we can see if we disable it we now get just basic yellow markings and now we can add the last parameter that's um, for the separator character and we use a single text character for that. And for the template, we're just gonna check if anything is passed. Um, only if, it's the, if this is the case, then we set any attribute to the web component. And let's test that by actually enabling partial mode so we want to create an interactive report um, so we have multiple um, rows and uh, author of the separator in there and then we set one of the column types to the partial component and what we see now is that this does not actually work unfortunately and the reason for that is that we actually just render the data tag here, not the web component that wraps, um, that should wrap the data tags. Okay, so fix this in our case, we need to create a copy of our template component. And there we just gonna copy the string compare one to string compare partial. And we're gonna move the HTML web component tag, the wrapper around our data tag and we need to go into the attributes and change the scope from report to component. Um, we don't have any report settings in uh, a partial template component. So we need to do that for every one of the attributes. And um, now we can just unselect multiple. Save our changes, we go to our page. I have, a, uh, we can here then move to our new partial component we set the text value set the separator and if we now run it we can see 
that we can use it in our report. So this is it of our small um, plugin here. And as I told you before, currently there's a template component plugin challenge running. Um, it's uh, hosted by MT, my employer, and um, you can submit, cr first create your own template component, uh, and then you can submit them here. There are for you rules, for example, you have to um, upload them to apex.world and GitHub and stuff. You can read this in um, and yeah, check this out. But um, I really want to encourage you to take part of this competition. We have great prizes. We had a we have a great jury that's gonna um, look at each plugin and determine which are the best ones. So the prizes will be fairly rewarded for everyone. And um, don't overthink it. You don't need to have complex plugins or anything else. Um, simple ones are mostly the most polished one and stuff. So if you have any nice ideas what could be great template components, you can participate here. I'm looking forward to your contributions. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you in the next video. Goodbye.